We're very lucky today to be joined by Scott Allen. Scott is the founder and principal consultant of Ode to Code. He's a published print book author, one of the hosts of the Herding Code uh, podcast, and the author of plural site courses on everything from ASP.net, <laughs> jQuery, patterns, and test first development. Uh, today he's here and he's going to be talking to us about AngularJS. Welcome, Scott. Hello, Adam. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, tell me, how did you find out about AngularJS? I've been on a quest for the last two or three years to find a good client-side framework that can handle complexity when you start building pages that go beyond just simple AJAX callbacks and start bordering on or becoming the single page application, the SPA that we call it now. And uh, Angular was one that, I, that, that kept coming up. I looked at it, um, I don't know, maybe a year ago once and I have to say the initial 30 second impression was that I wasn't impressed unfortunately but when I actually went back to it uh, more recently and went through some code and wrote some code with it uh, I just fell in love with it everything made sense Wow, that's great so what can you use it for and where is it really going to help me out so angular is uh, it's not a minimalistic framework so it's a framework that would that you would use to build a page that has some complexity to it that requires a lot of script. So much script that you probably want to start to think about a separated presentation pattern. You want to think about having a view component which is your HTML. You want to think about having a model which uh, is JavaScript objects that could represent things you're pulling back from a web service. So invoices, employees, videos, movies, those types of objects. So you have your view and you have your model you want to establish some data binding between the two, two-way data binding, Angular can help you with that. And it also has the concept of a controller, so it uses the model view controller design pattern, uh, much like the model view controller design pattern that I use on the server a lot with ASP.NET, that it gives you that separated presentation pattern on the client. So it allows you to scale up the complexity of your JavaScript code and keep things separated and testable, and you don't have just uh, a big pile of JavaScript functions with jQuery event handlers all over the place. Excellent. So talk to me about how the models, are, you, you said it's using models in JavaScript. Are these, are you talking just about a piece of JSON or are you talking about uh, implementing a, a class-like um, object in JavaScript? Sure. It, you know, it really could be either. Kind of like what we have at ASP.NET WC where the model, there's not a real clear definition of it. S to some people, the model uh, or whatever entities they're bringing back from the database to other people, the model is always a view model, to DTOs, whatever. It's kind of the same thing in JavaScript. Typically, you need some information on a page, so you call a web service, like a, a web API endpoint. You bring back data in JSON, and you might just take that JSON data, um, populate JavaScript objects out of it, and that is your model. Um, and you typically add a few more things, but you could certainly also uh, define uh, types, use constructor functions and prototypes and all that good JavaScript stuff to define um, a JavaScript quote-unquote class. Yep. Excellent. So without it becoming a religious debate, how does it compare to the other frameworks? Well, I think Angular is interesting because uh, there's a lot of other frameworks out there and, and I think it's very personal choice actually. Some people will really like Angular, some people won't, that's okay. Um, other frameworks out there, some of them are a little more minimalistic, so they give you a lot of the pieces, the raw pieces, but you still have to stitch things together. Um, other frameworks will focus on one particular aspect of building a complex JavaScript application like um, well, Knockout. JS is very popular in the Microsoft community. It focuses on data binding, two-way data binding. Um, so if you want to build a single page application, you typically need Knockout and some additional libraries to help you with things like routing and navigation and view composition. A Angular is a little bit bigger, so it gives you all those types of things out of the box. It has um, two-way data binding, it has view composition, it has dependency injection, tries to help you write testable code. Um, the one thing I like about the two-way data binding that's very different from some of the other frameworks is that it doesn't require you to have observable JavaScript objects. So um, observable JavaScript objects, to make it observable, to know when a property changes, the, the instant that it changes, you have to walk up to every property on an object and turn it into a function. 
So you know, you no longer have something where you can say, like employee dot first name equals Scott. Now you say employee dot first name, and it's a function call. You pass in the value Scott, and again, just my personal feeling is I never quite liked that. Angular takes a different approach to that, where Angular's in uh, has so much control over when your code executes. It knows when your code executes because something happened in the DOM. Uh, it knows that something might have changed because of a, a key up event. So the user might be typing on the screen. It knows that that could introduce a change in the model. And what it can do is go through in the model and essentially take snapshots of the current state. And then something happens, something interesting happens. And if someone types something or my code executed, it'll go back and inspect the model and see if anything changed. And when it sees that something changed, it can update uh, a change in the model, it'll update the UI for me automatically. A change in the UI, it'll push the changes back into my model for me. So, <coughs> so we've got that nice separation of the, the model, the, the view, and the controller. So what's going on in the controller when you're talking about just putting it purely on the client side? Inside the uh, an Angular controller on the client side, you, you typically are doing things like uh, responding to DOM events. Uh, so um, the interesting thing is you don't really write any jQuery code in a Angular controller. You, you don't interact with the DOM at all. Instead, what you would do is go into your HTML element and place what's known as an Angular directive in the element that says, I want to know when someone clicks on this button, for instance. Okay. And when they click on that button, you can say, um, I want to make sure that you invoke this method on my controller. So the, the controller is responding to these events, um, you know, responding to a button click event, what it might have to do is change something in the model, uh, invoke a method on the model to do some new calculation. Oftentimes you'll be calling back to the server to get more data or up, updating something over a web API. And so you do that. Similar to what we're doing in ASP.NET MVC controller. Yeah, it's very similar. You know, you try to keep the controller decoupled from the view and presentation logic. It's really concerned about responding to an external stimulus, right? On, on in an ASP.NVC application, the external stimulus is an incoming HTTP message, or in an Angular controller, the external stimulus is typically, you know, the user did something on the screen or a timeout was reached, so I need to recalculate things now. Excellent. And it's very, for anyone who's done a separated presentation pattern, I, I think you'll find it um, very comfortable to work in. So if you've done NVVM with Silverlight, it's actually very close. You find that you have the same concept of a view model behind the scenes. That's some combination of your um, business data, you know, again, employees or accounts or invoices and things like that. And you'll find that you'll also need to add some things to the model, augment it with some um, I'd hesitate to call them presentation concerns, but let's say, for instance, you want something to appear and disappear on the screen. Um, in your Angular controller, you wouldn't interact with the DOM directly and say, show this and hide this. You'd simply set a property on your model, set it to true to make something show, set it to false so that it should, should turn off, and the data binding makes sure that all that happens for you. You can write unit tests then to make sure that when this happens, something goes false, and when, someone undoes it, it goes back to true. Excellent. And is it using its own unit test framework, or are you using something like QUnit for uh, like the generic um, JavaScript unit test framework? You can use pretty much any uh, test JavaScript test framework that you want. Um, Angular itself, uh, you'd, you'd see most of the examples using Jasmine, which is a BDD style type of unit test where you describe a scenario. Excellent. And how does the dependency injection work? Is there a container that it uses, or is it using like a manual dependency injection? It is. Well, it's kind of interesting with Angular. Since there's no real types in JavaScript, it's not that I can um, advertise like on the, the constructor of my controller. It's not like I can advertise that I want an uh, I repository, which is something you might see in C Sharp. Instead, uh, it uses well-known names for some dependencies, well, for all dependencies. So if I put a uh, parameter in my Angular controller's constructor that is named dollar sign HTTP, then Angular knows what I want for that dependency is something that uh, talks HTTP. It knows I essentially want a wrapper around the XML HTTP request object. And at runtime, that's what it gives me. 
doing unit testing, I could pass in a, a fake for that. Excellent. And then so, you, you can just, well, uh, just sorry, you can describe uh -huh. your own services too and give them well-known names. So if you, you say that you need um, the uh, employee service, the employee service could be something that wraps a, a RESTful web API, then, oh, then you can cool. do that too. It's very extensible that way. It makes it great for testing. Yes. Fantastic. Um, so it sounds great. If I, it, but it sound it does sound large and complicated, and like there is a bit of a fair bit of investment into getting your head around all of this. Um, if I was going to get started, where, what? How would you get started? Have you got any tips for resources or where you would go to to really get into it? I'd say it has a, a really good tutorial that you could walk through. It's a 12 or 14 step tutorial where they start with the most basic application that you could possibly create with Angular. So there's a couple lines of JavaScript, maybe one or two directives, and all it does is show a, a list box on the screen with, with some items in it, or a, a list of items. And uh, over through the next 12 or 14 steps, you'll see how to add um, filters, which would allow you to, to filter your model if you want to search for something specific in a collection, let's say, to XML HTTP requests, to um, the dependency injection, writing your own service. It goes through pretty much every facet of, of Angular. Um, the one caveat, I guess, with the tutorial is that it's all set up to run under, under Node.js, but that's a, a really simple install. and it's, They give you all the instructions where you can just uh, install that, run it from the command line, it's up and running, and you have this real web application running on your computer. And you get to learn Node at the same time. <laughs> and you can learn a little bit of Node at the same time, and, and if you've never been in that world, it's kind of interesting because you can see Node running and what it can do, and you can see uh, how they like to run um, unit tests and have them run continuously, so every time you save a file, there'll be a console window up and running that shows you immediately when you save the file if something's passing or failing and how they do end-to-end -end tests and yeah, it's a, it's, it's a good tutorial. Wow, that sounds great. Sounds like we need to have another chat uh, after this on Node.js. <laughs> sure. Node.js on Azure maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, <coughs> when, when I'm learning a new tool or a new framework, after I've got my head around it and I'm really comfortable with it, you know, usually I'll look back and I'll go, well, if someone had told me before I started, you know, this little nugget, it would have saved me a lot of time. Mm. Um, is is there is there something with Angular that um, that burnt time that you wish someone had told you before you'd started? Yeah, I guess uh, one thing that that looked to be a little bit difficult with Angular is some of the finer grained dumb uh, events, things like uh, focus events. I need to know when an input box has focus. Um, and those types of things are out there if you do some searching. And I, I guess the, the, the best tip would be to look at the Angular group on Google Groups. That's their, um, their form. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of coverage of Angular on Stack Overflow too. But if you go to that group and ask a question, it's a pretty friendly group and they're pretty good about answering questions and pointing you in the right direction. That's great. So, do you, so are you using Angular on all of your like? What percentage of your projects are you saying that you that you would use Angular that you're finding Angular helpful with? Right now, just two. Um, <laughs> I, I have a bunch of applications around that are uh, ten years old that are still using web yeah. forms, and they're not very uh, Ajaxy, but yeah. and that's fine. They are internal applications that hospitals use, but uh, we're. As we write more applications, we're trying to make them nicer and look better and perform more modern. And of course now, you know, a lot of clients look at a web application and say, does this run on my I iPad? And yeah. uh, does it look nice on my iPad and actually respond to things like swipe events? So, yeah, um, yeah that requires so a slightly different approach. <laughs> so it sounds like it's the next evolution. So we've... Uh, been going around getting people onto MVC and having this nice mm. separation of concerns with their model view and controller and introducing them to concepts like dependency injection. But then, you know, then they, they've, they've got a pretty simple view and then they want to start building these really dynamic, um, you know, JavaScript, jQuery, you know, really animated um, views. And then yeah. it just seems that there's a lot of really rough JavaScript, you know, the, the views. They might have a great architecture behind the scenes, 
But mm. the code in the news is that then becomes spaghetti code. And there's, there's not a real emphasis on that. And it sounds like this is the next step, or this is the next step for developers who have got everything going on well and they're proud of what's going on behind the scenes. But this is what uh, this takes it to the next, you know, brings those same concepts to the to the view. Is is that? Do you see it as that kind of an evolution? Oh, absolutely. Uh, these days, if you're building a, a complex page that has a lot of interactivity on it and you're making a lot of calls back to the server and dynamically updating the screen and you're doing that only by writing your own code and using some jQuery it, it's a challenge to try to organize that so that it can be maintained and updated and, and kept running and uh, frameworks like Angular and the other frameworks give you a lot of help with that and that's not even mentioning the, the other problems that you run into things like managing the history of the browser. So I went to the user to be able to do, to do all these things and sort things differently and all this. And then what happens when they hit the back button? Well, I don't want them to go back to the entire previous page. I want them to go back to the previous state. And uh, dealing with things like that, uh, you, you could write it all from scratch, but uh, it's, it would be a long job. Does, does, that, does that even help you with that actual problem? Oh, sure. Yeah, Angular actually has the, the concept of um, uh, routing and, and view navigation. So I could have the, the shell of a page load. That's basically an HTML. I just send a very empty HTML down to the client with just enough in it to get Angular bootstrapped. And I tell Angular, the first view that you should load, and unless another view has been requested, is this default view. So it'll go back to the server, pick up that view. Um, plop it in, wire up the controller, wire up the model, do the data mining, and then maybe when the user clicks on a button, I want it to navigate to another view, so it'll pick up the other view and data bind and all that, but also adjust the browser history so that if the user clicks the back button, they actually go back to the previous view and not leave leave the page entirely, if that makes that's, sense. Wow, that's, really, that's, that's very cool. Well, it sounds like Angular is something that um, we should all be looking into and uh, evaluating for to, to build really rich um, you know, testable, um, you know, really clean coded uh, views. So I'm, I'm sure if anyone wants to uh, to find out more information, that you've got some posts on your blog. Yeah, I started a series on Angular just to try to to get the word out about it a little bit. I, I really enjoy the framework, and it's worked out well for me. Excellent. And uh, they should uh, anyone out there should follow you on your Twitter handle, which is at Ode to Code. Sure, if they want to. <laughs> Fantastic. And check out your courses on Pluralsight. Right. That would Excellent. be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Look, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And um, and we'll, we'll look forward to catching up with you soon uh, for about Node.js. Oh, sure. <laughs> Thanks. <Scott. laughs> thank you.